Hello friends, pump sucks the water from the pool through skimmers and drains. Things such as leaves or twigs shall be retained here. After this, water passes through a filter and it gets filtered here. Then it passes through a heater and gets heated. Then water passes through a chemical feeder wherein water is chemically treated and again goes into the pool through return inlets. This system of collection, treatment and return of pool water is repeated over and over to ensure the water is free from dirt, debris and bacteria. Now let us understand all the components of swimming pool one by one in detail. Basin The main difference between different types of pools is how the basin is constructed. Above ground pools are generally prefabricated and cheapest one. Fiberglass pools are made from fiberglass reinforced plastic. Vinyl lined in-ground pools. These pools are a lot cheaper than other in-ground designs, but not as durable. Typically, the liner needs to be replaced every 10 years or so. Gunite pools. Gunite is a mixture of cement, sand and water, which is applied through a pressure hose produces a dense hard layer of concrete. These pools are highly durable. Poured concrete pools Poured concrete pools are similar to gunite pools, but they are a lot harder to construct. Instead of spraying concrete material around a rebar framework, concrete is actually poured into conventional formwork. Last one is masonry block pool. They are constructed with concrete blocks. Main drains. Main drains are usually located on the lowest point in the pool, so the entire pool surface slants towards them. Most of the dirt and debris that sinks exits the pool through these drains. These drains are covered with grates. Skimmer. A skimmer is most often a rectangular opening in the pool wall near the top at the water surface level. The rectangular openings located on the side of an in-ground pool are referred to as built-in schemers. Robotic schemers or automatic schemers are also available in the market. Depending on the size of the pool, you may have one or more schemers installed. When the pool pump is running, the schemer works by pulling water and floating debris from the pool surface through a pivoting flap called a weir. When the pool pump is turned off, the pivoting flap turns to its original position where it helps prevent the debris from re-entering the pool. At this point, the skimmer basket contains the debris from the pool surface and should be emptied routinely to ensure free water flow and maximum filtering ability. For clean water and proper functioning of equipments, skimmer basket needs to be cleaned at least once a week. Now let us understand what will happen if we don't install skimmer in a pool. Without a skimmer, debris and chemicals will not be removed from the pool. The pool will become cloudy and algae growth will take place. The pump will be prone to wear and tear and you will have to replace it before the manufacturer's recommended date. All this is a costly affair so maintaining your pool skimmer is essential. Now let us understand components of skimmer. The lid. It is a visible component of the skimmer and works to keep larger debris such as twigs and leaves from being sucked into the pool's circulation system. The weir. It is called as a floating door. It is a swinging flap located inside the skimmer mouth and will pivot with the flow of water. The main purpose of the weir is to prevent the debris from escaping back into the pool. When the pool pump is turned off, the weir cleverly moves into a closed position which prevents debris from re-entering the pool. The skimmer basket, also known as strainer basket. It collects debris before it is pulled into the pump. This is an essential component of the skimmer as without the basket, Debris will clog and damage filtration system. Pump 
a pool's plumbing system is generally categorized into two sections the suction side and the pressure side the suction side is the part of the plumbing that carries water from the pool towards the pump the pressure side is the part of the plumbing that carries pressurized water away from the pump and back to the pool after deciding the basin size you need to decide the capacity of pump generally pump should have adequate capacity to circulate all the pool's water in 8 hours time so we can work out how many liters of water it pumps per hour on many residential pools the pumps are overpowered so it may not even take 8 hours to circulate the pool however if you don't know the power of your pump running the pump 8 to 10 hours a day is a good rule of thumb water filter the water flows through the pump to the filter the filter cleans your pool water by removing debris which is not captured by skimmer skimmer removes larger debris such as hair and leaves and filter removes tiny impurities these could be residues from lotions hair products and sunscreen or tiny bits of algae or dust there are three main types of filters generally used in swimming pool sand de and cartridge sand filter sand filters work by running water through specially sized sand the debris gets caught in the sand as the water passes through they are very low maintenance and the cheapest option however they only filter down to 20 microns a sand filter needs to be backwashed and rinsed regularly every 1 to 2 months depending on pool use de filter the long form of de is diatomaceous earth de filters use a special clay like powder to filter out even the tiniest debris de filters can capture the smallest debris of any filter down to 5 microns the de powder is sprayed over a grid covered in a fine mesh of woven polyester or a similar material as the water flows through impurities are caught in the de powder this is the most expensive type of filter but by the numbers it is the most efficient cartridge filter the simplest type of filter is a cartridge filter much like the air filter on a home hvac system the cartridge collects debris and must be removed and washed occasionally eventually a cartridge needs to be replaced chemical feeder and heater after passing through filter cleaned water flows through heaters and chemical feeders a pool heater is usually powered by natural or propane gas the water passes through a heat exchange where it is heated by the heat of combustion there is not much maintenance of a pool heater the main concern is just to clean around the heater regularly to ensure nothing combustible is too close to the heater many pools have a chemical feeder a chemical feeder is a tank that may hold pellets or another type of concentrated time release chemical usually chlorine or bromine by gradually releasing chemicals into the pool water they reduce the need for manual chemical balancing returns returns are the last stop on pool water's journey where it returns to the pool returns are usually located in at least two spots around the pool though some older pools may have only one balancing tank balanced tanks are primarily used for the storage of excess water generated from the displacement of swimmers bodies a pool with a balanced tank maintains a constant depth regardless of how many people are in the pool once the swimmers exit the pool the extra water that balanced tank has been holding returns to the pool and the balanced tank returns to its normal operating level so friends see you in the next video thanks for watching